up here in the back if anyone wants to sit down. Thank you everybody for coming here today. We got ourselves a ribbon cutting ceremony to get underway. And this is for the new temporary police station. Thanks to the overwhelming support from the Homestead community, our hardworking police officers will finally be able to breathe easy in a safe, brand new, clean, and modern facility. Everyone, let's give a round of applause for our brave officers here today. Now, to get us started, I'd like to call up the police chaplain, Reverend Chauncey Brown, to lead us in the invocation. Reverend? There you go. Oh, yeah. How could I miss you? Most gracious and loving God, it is on this day that we come to thank you for the opportunity to experience new things in you. We pray that you would hollow this sacred ground in which our offices to protect our city and protect our families and friends. That you would also put your protection upon this place as they walk here each and every day, recognizing your presence and your power. We pray now that you would bless the endeavors of this day, bless our city leaders, our police officers, our city manager, all of those who make sure that we are safe and that we have a secure place to live, to make Homestead a better place. We thank you for this day, what you shall do, for the lives that shall be changed because the officers who patrol the streets and keep our city safe. We give you praise, we give you glory. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you, Reverend. I would like to now welcome the Homestead Police Honor Guard. Hey! Bonitas. As well as the support 
of Neil D. Jesus from President Managing Partner of Diversify Group. <laughs> Saw him back there. So, now that we got that out of the way, without, my, without further ado, I'd like to have, call up now our very own mayor, Homestead's mayor, Jeff Porter. Mayor and Council, you guys do an awesome job of putting this all together and supporting the police department and, and uh, just basically getting this done. But, you know, if you go back a little bit in time when this all started. The manager did an analysis on the old police station. Test came back very bad. The decision was made we need to do something for the employees. We couldn't do it alone, so we asked the voter. We explained it to the voter. The voter overwhelmingly supported it. Upwards of 74% said we want our officers in a safe place. We picked the stadium. It was the best way to spend the taxpayer money and get the police in some place safe rather quickly. And here today we are. So, um, got to thank the voters. Got to thank the taxpayers. Um, we want, our, we want our family safe, we want our employees safe, we want our employees happy. Had a chance to come out yesterday or the day before, I don't know, the chief and just kind of popped in and a big smile on all the officers' faces. They were still in their work clothes, you know, just knocking it out. But um, a total team effort on behalf of the council, the manager and his team, uh, all the city departments are involved. When you think about it, this is this is not just the police, it's IT, it's parks and rec. Thank the taxpayer for that because we asked for them to support you on that and again they did. So um, I'm, I'm thrilled to be a part of this team, a part of this council, uh, and, and be able to stand up here and, and say thank you to everyone who had a hand in this to make this possible for these police officers. And at this time, if anyone from the council would like to say anything, you're, I, I appreciate the help. Vice Mayor, anyone? thank you, thank you everyone for being here. Thank you. It's just exciting times here in the city of Homestead. I mean, it's another month and another ribbon cutting. Seems like we were just doing the topping off ceremony for the city hall. Before that, it was the groundbreaking. We've got some the Seminole Theater coming up, some other things that we're going to be working on and, and showing the development we have going on here. But, but this has been great because we are able to actually protect those who protect us. And that is our police department. So it was very important that we move quickly on getting them out of that contaminated building into a building where they're safe and can perform their functions to the best of their abilities. And so I, I, I thank staff, I thank the construction company, I thank everybody that was involved. You know the voters specifically for for approving these monies because this was part of that bond referendum effort. This was this these monies were always anticipated to build the temporary space before we built the final space, and so this is part of that promise that we as a council made to the voters and to the residents that we work quickly to honor those promises and the representations that we made. So thanks again, staff and, and all the employees and everybody and all that they've done to really work hard and 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 push the envelope on what we're able to do time-wise, and they've really been doing a fantastic job. So thank you guys, and congratulations to, to the chief and to the police for the new temporary facility. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, everyone who came out here today. I just have a simple message, and it's to those who serve our community, the police officers. You know, this community sent a message out to you that we care for you, that we respect what you do for us, and how you put your lives on the line for our safety. And all we ask for in return is that you would give us the care and respect that we gave you. We care for your health, for your families, and for your future. And we just ask that you do the same thing for this community. You guys are the front line to our safety, our quality of life, our happiness and joy. It's you guys who do that. We thank you for all that you do, the tireless hours that you work, the frustrations you go through, the hardship, the danger that you guys put yourself through, we thank you for that. I thank you for that. And we just ask that you would treat everyone out here in this community the same way we treated you, in the sense of we're taking care of you. Take care of us back. Thank you. Have a good week.
Congressman couldn't be here today, but he is very proud of the work you guys do, and uh, he just wanted to congratulate you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bianca. All right, at this time, I'd like to call up our city manager, George Gretzis. Thank you very much. I was wondering, I, I don't know how much of, with, you know, of us you can hear in the back, but if you can hear me, I would appreciate all the, the staff from the police department, police officers, command staff, employees, if you wouldn't mind coming, standing over here in front, because this ceremony really is about you, and I really don't like to see you in the back. Please, please come on. Pretty good indication of what kind of department this is. They didn't take the seats for the pub that the public is sitting in. They stood in the back out of respect to the public and put the public first as they always do. So please come on forward, all of you. Come on, come on, stand up front here by the podium. The chief is going to be speaking in a minute. I'm sure he wants you all here. Yeah, don't worry, come on up front, come on up front. Okay, look, here's the truth. Councilman, why don't you come on up? Okay. I want everyone to understand the importance of what's happening here. What's happening here is that, first of all, for those of you who don't know what radon is, radon, radon is a radioactive gas. It's a natural gas that comes through the ground. And what happens is, people don't know that radon is coming up out of the ground, and it accumulates in a building over time. And over time, as people don't know that it's happening, it causes lung cancer for some people. And in fact, 20,000 people a year die from cancer-related radon, radon-related cancer. And so the irony of this is, we don't know how long this was going on in the building, but right now we can say we don't know anybody, thank God, on city staff, including police officers that have lung cancer, thank God. But the point of the matter is that had we not found this out, had we not had bosses that cared about us, about us mayor, council, and ultimately the public, who knows how long we would have been breathing radioactive gas, both in City Hall and at the police station. And the irony of having police officers out on the street putting themselves in danger and potentially the biggest danger to them would have been what they were breathing inside the police station. So we are very grateful to our police officers for what they do and putting themselves at risk on a daily basis. But we owe them, both as their, as their employers, to make sure that they're as safe as they can be. And Mayor, Council, I can't thank you enough for taking the political risk because, you know, political risk for all of you is a real, it's a real thing, which is you've got to go out to the public and say, we need money to build facilities. And, you know, in, over the last five, six years, this hasn't been a good time for government. You know, the public has been angry about the economy and angry about government spending. And I'm assuming you're going to let him say a few words after you're done, but this guy was here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He lived, breathed, breathed, and he ate this place, I don't know, for how many months, almost a year now. And uh, Scott, I, I can't thank you enough for caring and for uh, fighting for the department. And also, Mayor Council, unlike many of other city uh, departments, police departments, this department believes in compromise. They believe in working together as a family. And so just like they said, oh no, we're not gonna sit in the chairs. We want to leave that for the public. They also knew that money is not you know, unlimited and they did everything they could to work with us and be reasonable. And so Scott, thank you so much. And to all of you and uh, Mayor Council, I can't thank you enough. We really feel honored that you care as much about us as you have and that you support not only getting us out of the building now but also your investment in the downtown which is what we're doing and we proudly hand it off to you i know we're going to do a ribbon cutting but please we'd like you to say a few words thank you very much uh, thank you george city manager uh the city manager pretty much said it all uh, it's not that I, I have that much to say, but I want to say just, just this. First of all, you have to care. In order to get anything done, not only just in the city, but anywhere, you have to care. And the fact that the city manager 
had a vision. He felt that employers were living, uh, we were working every day in an unhealthy environment. And he came to me one day and he said, you know, we need to check this place. They came out, they checked it. I think the, the round level in the police department was probably five times the average of what it's supposed to be. With that being said, the city manager then, in turn, went to the, the mayor and the council and told them what the problem was in the PD. So again, you know, that's caring. That's caring about your employees. Because in a lot of places, the bosses, they care, but they don't care the way homestead people care. Mr. Mayor, you don't mind coming forward again? The mayor, the mayor, the mayor and council, don't come forward. I don't want to leave anybody out. Dispatch with my dispatcher. Dispatch. There you go. Unbelievable. Amazing. Amazing. SIU, GIU, traffic. Lieutenant Sermon. And I could name all you guys. I have never seen a place like this before. And I'm so glad to be the police chief here. That's why I keep, I guess I keep sticking around, you know. But these people are unbelievable. But the mayor and council, I want to thank you all again. Because let me tell you something. Ever since I've been here, in the last past two years, everything that I think I wanted, we got it. The city manager believes in me because one thing I want people to understand about me, I'm not no play play chief. I'm for real. I'm here for a reason. Our reason is to make sure that the mayor and council, the this, this city manager, survive in this time. And the way to do it is to go out there and protect the citizens to the best of, to the best of their ability. In all honesty, though, you know, I have never been in a city where you get so much love and so much support from, from the, the mayor and council and the city manager. Kate, I want to I thank Kate because Kate came in at the end of this deal and she, she made it work for us. Carlos, HR director, nothing but the best. Found the money. That's what it's all about. Uh, Dennis and Pedro, you guys are unbelievable. I have never worked with a, with a group of people that you can reach out to with problems and no one say no. They find a way to get it done. That's what, that's what Homestead is all about. Small group of people, we're powerful. We get it, we get it, we get it all done. So last but not least, I want to I wanna thank the admin assistants. Without them, people don't realize that. I'm quite sure that the chief of this command staff understand how important administrative staff is. Without them, we couldn't function. They, they are, they're awesome. <laughs> Last but not least, we, we're 108 strong, and we still, we still, we still, we still, we still, we still need more. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna lie about that. We can always use more. But uh, hopefully this, this year coming up, you know, th things will change a little bit. We may get one or two more officers. But if it doesn't happen, mayor and council, city manager, guess what? We're still gonna, we're still gonna keep on with the keep on. We're gonna do what we're supposed to do. We're gonna take care of this town and you're not gonna hear anyone complaining because again, this year, remember, we get another raise. <laughs> uh, so with that being said, I appreciate everybody coming, you guys are terrific, and uh, I hope you all like what you all said, because, because uh, we took a baseball stadium and made it into a police department with no resistance from these people on the east side of the highway. That's remarkable. That means that they believe in us. And to show you all we care about you all, we're going to make sure that you all get exactly what you all want from us. And that's the, that's, the, that's the protection from our police department for this community. With that being said, I'm going to fill up for right now. But it, where, where are they? Got four people? Oh, Morales. Our local FOP and PBA. Uh, where, is, where is Monica? Oh, there you go. Okay. Where is uh, where is uh, Officer Monaco? He's not here. He's the PDA. PDA. Come on.
we, you know, I want to thank these guys because these guys are the ones that they are my eyes and my ears in the department. There was something going on wrong here, or something, somebody not happy with something. These guys give me the courtesy to come to me and let me address it before you take it to anybody else. Uh, I have to commend them for doing that. I appreciate the, the 10 years you've been PBA, Officer Monaco, and all the years that Sergeant Yanko, and with the FOP, you guys, unbelievable. Let's keep working the way we're doing right now, and we can make this thing work. I know I, I know I missed some, some some people, but you gotta you know I, I apologize because you know I don't have my glasses on them. I just saw Debbie from the back back there. But but again though, from the bottom of my heart, thank the city manager for having that vision, for caring about us, to get us out of that building, and thank the mayor and council for finding the funds and caring about your employees, making us take care of us, getting out of that building because they know the danger we was up under for all those years. I've been there since 1985. I can tell you right now, I probably could blow on somebody right now and kill them. All the rain I got in my body. But uh, again, thank you, Mr. Manager, appreciate it. And uh, thank you all for coming again. And hope you enjoyed the tour. Anything you need from us? The mayor? I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, mayor, it's, it's your show. I just want to say, I think the chief is excited. Well, I've never heard him talk that much in my life. If you want to see some of the construction inside, eyes only, certainly nobody can go. But I think there's going to be an ability to go in and see some of the construction, some of what's been done. Also, we're going to meet out at the main entrance, which is right around the corner here. We've got a little ribbon cutting ceremony. I guess that's going to take place now. And then if you want to come back into this room, then they'll do the, then they'll have the guided tours. I want to say one quick thing. I don't even know where she is right now, but I wanted to introduce to you Miss Homestead, Amber Woods. Where is she? Amber is, um, this is her first public appearance. This is her first public appearance, and um, her sa chaperone wasn't available, so I'm her chaperone today. But um, her mother was employed by the city of Homestead for over 30 years, and so beloved. And, it, and she was my intern. Amber was my intern, and she came today. So um, thank you so much. All right, everybody, let's head on out of this way. To the left, through these doors, we're going to have the ribbon cutting ceremony start right away.